the tables have turned. This week I'm not feeling too well so I'm having to give Chris a good kick up the backside to get him pulling his weight on the work front. And here he is in action. She says she's not well. Someone's got a man up haven't they? Show sure, that's done. It's about time. Oh I'm not well. Well enough to hold the camera. We'll get there. We're a team. So one last little scrape through the shower room and the bedroom. All ready for wire brushing. Can you see me through them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just getting sort of the debris that we missed last time when it was starting to get dark. It's impossible to see in here when it's dark. Fear not. We believe that is eight millimetres thick and then there's a base plate beneath it which could be 12.5 millimetres thick. But we're going to tell you that story later. Yeah, we'll tell you that story later. So if you see us going hard, <laughs> then... So for those that are new here, we purchased our first ever narrowboat back in July and it came with a horrendous leak underneath the floorboards that we were unaware of. So yeah, time to sort that shit out. And just to let you know, my DIY skills are absolutely horrendous. The dreaded wire brush, here we go. Ready Bex? So we have given the base plate two, not one, but two scrapes, swept all the debris up and now we're gonna wire brush it Sweep it all up again and it's ready for slapping on some aqua steel. Bex has got to help me. First day back in the gym after two years and I've got an injury. I can't. <laughs> well, tell me when you're ready because I can't see. <laughs> what are you doing? It's sharp bit. You're going to see me horrible. What? Fucking hell, that's really painful. The sharp bit, look there. The sharp bit that's stabbing into my heart and my head. Just what a worse. <laughs> pull it over, but I can't move my elbow. <laughs> it's such a worse. <laughs> You're doing it on purpose. Oh my god. My elbow is so painful right now. All this hard work. Bex is ill, I've got a dodgy elbow. Tools at the ready. He's going in. <laughs> what a shit storm. Here we go. Finished. And here's Chris. <laughs> the stages that we've gone through when we've been cleaning out these bilges for anyone who's interested. First job is to suck out all the water using a wet vacuum. Next job is using a sort of a flexible scraper, scrape up all of the flaky, rusty stuff. Without gloves. And then once that's off, go over it again a second time with the scraper. Then brush up a load of the dusty stuff, wire brush it, then lots more brushing to get as much of the powder off so it prepares it basically for the painting that we're going to be doing on it. And for those who remember the famous Where's Wally books. So the plan was to become continuous cruisers, guys, and to spend the next two years attacking every river and canal on the English network. Um, the boat was a little bit out of our budget, which is laughable now with what's going on. So we thought we'll, we've got to put the plans on hold a bit until next summer, maybe. So it's a good chance to get to know the boat. Um, let's, let's stay positive. The agenda is still the same. We will be cruising by April next year. Bex has got it all sorted. It's a Bex's idea. I think they're going to be cold in the middle. Morning everyone. Saturday morning at Crowbot Towers. It is bloody freezing. We've had a little cup of tea. Got the crossaws on the old, um, I was going to say squirrel, but it's a villager so. Bex thinks they're going to heat up. I think they're going to be cold. We're going to Wait until the end of the vlog to see if, if they're warm. <laughs> Stick around to the end of the vlog if you want to, <laughs> if you want to see if they're warm in the middle. <laughs> That'll keep you to the end of the vlog. Anyway, we're booked in for blacking in April, which is when we were going to get the boat out of the water. So we rang up Fox's Marina to sort of clarify some of the details to go through with the blacking and the whole servo. The boat had a 12.5 millimeter base plate put on, supposedly, to the on top of the normal old hole hole <laughs> so um, and I talked to the lady on the phone and she said I'll tell you what I'll put you through to the engineer that put the base plate on and you can actually ask him a few questions about it and I thought 
what? So I think the chap was called Alan, he came on the phone, and because the steel is so bloody heavy, what they do, they, they punch out holes in parts of it so that it must be a way of them welding from the inside to stop stop it all from sagging. So if that bottom is 12.5 millimeters thick, do you know how thick the inside of it is? And he said, yeah, the inside, the inside, the old, the old hole was eight millimeters thick. Um, we could be near on a 20 millimeter base here in most areas of the boat, but. I'm not sure fully. Sorry, that's a really bad story, isn't it? I should really know more. Anyway, I'm not going to make you stick around to the end. Ow, it's hot! <laughs> <laughs> I told you! So, in order to clarify this like amazingly exciting conversation that Chris had had with the chap at Fox's, what we've decided to do is grab ourselves an ultrasound um, gauge forgive me for my lack of technical wordage um, and we've got a perfect opportunity because we've got the floors up so we can um, take some measurements from the inside of the boat and see what we come up with and even better what our intention is is to measure what is the original base plate on some of the flat areas and then inside because the ultrasound can't take measurements through the two, the two plates it will basically stop where the first plate ends, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is take measurements over the flat surface from the inside of the bilges, which would be the original plate, and then inside our little belly buttons will be our overplated plate, so we can get a measurement of both of them and get like a better idea. What we're anticipating we're going to see is 8mm on the original plate and 12, 12.5 on the in the belly buttons meaning we've got a 20 millimeter hole baby so here we go here she is all the way from amazon so top of the range gear we don't mess about at crowbot towers no it's actually a very budget style one but it should give us a little bit of clarification even if it's a tiny bit it's going to be fun anyway isn't it? a little bit of clarification oh, oh, like so case. here she is There she is, the bad boy. Looks like some sort of thing a doctor has, isn't it? Well, we are doctors. Thickness doctors. <laughs> We've got this little nugget, and I think this is so we can calibrate the machine. So let's have a little read of the instructions and give it a whirl. The ultrasonic thickness gauge is an intelligent handhold product which adopts ultrasonic measuring principle and is controlled by microprocessor, provides quick and precise measurement of thickness for most of industrial material. I have a horrible feeling we need batteries. Luckily, some clever little shit has already put batteries in it. Ah. So you've already had a look without me? Unbelievable. I literally just put the batteries in straight into the transducer. You have to have quite a good surface for it to read properly. So you spend a lot of time just moving it a tiny bit to get where you need to be. Okay, put the old splodger on there. Okay, so what, now what we're doing, we're measuring this little thingy with this little thingy. The, the kit is supplied with this little nugging of metal of a known thickness so that you can calibrate the machine. So what we're looking for is we put this on here to test it and we're looking for it to be four millimetres. When the machine reach four, reaches four millimetres then the machine is calibrated. Okay, calibrator baby. Here we go. That's good enough, isn't it? No. <laughs> so this is where we're living currently, guys. In this tiny little area. Got the fire there, though, so we're all right. What a shithole. What an absolute shithole. Look at it. So we're going to go through to the other room. So I'll take you through into this freezing cold room. It's so cold in here. This is where the calibration will be taking place. So, spot the belly buttons, guys. I think there's about five of them. And they measure eight millimeters deep from the surface, really. So, I mean, that could mean that the old hole is eight millimeters, fingers crossed. 
and I've got to say, once you've scraped away all that horrible rust, I'm pretty impressed by the state of the bilges, really. I mean, it looks far, far worse with all that stuff on it. But now it looks, it looks quite decent, really. So the day of reckoning, and arguably not the most professional bit of equipment <laughs> used by arguably not the most professional people. But it will give us some sort of clarification if, you know, the boat needs a complete new hull put on, or if we're sort of kind of in the all clear to some extent. So we're purely going on word of mouth from the guy at the marina that told us that the 12.5 millimeter base plate starts to one of these belly buttons. So a little bit nerve-wracking here, you know. Where are the parsnips? In, in our heads, we thought this could be a couple of millimetres thick. So we've got to get rid of all the rust inside the area that we're going to do to get the clearest reading possible. 89 quid these are on Amazon, if anyone wants to buy one. I still find it hard to believe that there's a 12.5 millimetre plate beneath the 8 millimetres, because that would be... I mean, we knew this boat had a really heavy base, didn't we, when we purchased it? Yeah. But that seems just ridiculous, and maybe it was for when it went to sea, but... i tell you what though as well, I was looking at the neighbour's boat this morning, and ours does sit a lot lower in the water. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah, that's all the rust. I'm hoping it's 12.5, because that, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? Don't even need to get rid of the rust, just let it keep rusting for another hundred years. No, the boat deserves better, don't it, Bex? The boat went to sea, I think this boat has already got quite a mad story. And we're just going to add to that story, aren't we, by taking it around the country. Gelled up. Jesus. So, we have to bear in mind that this machine is not going to be, like, deadly ag accurate. But that sort of tells us possibly that 12 oh. millimetre oh. is realistic. I think, like, obviously this is a budget machine. It's not as nowhere near as spanky as the ones the actual surveyors use. But, um, like Chris said before, it'll give us some clarification. And that, to me, is sort of hopefully close enough that we can say, yeah, that is a 12 metre, uh, 12 metre, <laughs> 12 <laughs> millimetre base plate under there. I wonder if to get that little metal coin again and just put it on there just to see what it would do now. Come on. There you go, yeah. I mean, that's good enough yeah. for us, isn't it? First half. Eight. Yeah. I mean, we've done two measurements, so we need to do quite a few more. The first couple of measurements is sort of suggesting that the theories are correct, that the original base plate is eight millimetres, and this is the, the over plate, which is another 12 millimetres, 12.5 millimetres. 20.5 millimetres. For the smoothest bit you can find, so it gets a good contact. Then out of nowhere, our hole was growing. God, that's 18 there. <laughs> then Bex confirmed it was a false reading. I'm not happy with that, it's meant to be eight. It's good, isn't it? So into the shower room. Twelve point five is what came up first. No, that's stabilised now. Pick it up quick before it keeps dropping even further. <laughs> I don't think we're sinking anytime soon. Fingers crossed. 